Out of the country, the Uganda presidential candidate Bobby Wine has been detained for the third time in two months. While campaigning in the country's central region, Wine, a popular musician whose real name is Robert Nyakulai, was taken to the capital Kampala in a military helicopter. Members of his campaign team were also detained. Police accused Wine of reaching a campaign ban, ostensibly introduced because of the coronavirus pandemic. But the district he was campaigning in wasn't covered by the ban. As news of Wine's arrest spread, there were reports of protests and police using tear gas against demonstrators. Photographs from the scene showed Wine being escorted by at least 10 police officers, some armed with rifles. Wine was wearing a helmet and bulletproof vest, which he was said he uses to prevent injuries whenever police disperse his meetings. The country's long-term president, Yoweri Museveni, who has held power since 1986, faces a strong challenge from Wine, who has rallied impoverished young people. Efforts to intimidate Wine since he announced his candidacy have included him being arrested several times. On the first occasion, only minutes after his former nomination in the capital, Kampala, Georges Senyonyi, a spokesman for Wine's party, the National Unity Platform, described the arrest. He said, Bobby Wine and the entire team he went with to Kalangala to campaign have been arrested. Kalangala was one of the districts on schedule for today. It's not one of the districts where they have banned campaigns. So when he got there, him and team were arrested. They didn't tell them why they are arresting them, where they are taking them, and all of that. We are following. It's a continued intimidation. The state is trying to slow us down to intimidate our candidates and citizens. But we are determined. We are very strong. We are going all the way. We must remove the dictatorship, Fred Enanga, a police spokesman, said in a statement. We would like to clarify that the candidate Bobby Wine was restrained for continuously holding massive rallies amidst the increased threat of coronavirus. In a total disregard of the Electoral Commission and Ministry of Health guidelines, he is being transferred to his home in Mangere, Kampala. Part of his advanced team captured on CCTV cameras and several video footages while deflating tires of police motor vehicles inciting violence, obstructing police officers on duty, violating the health and safety protocols and various traffic offenses have been arrested. Next, President Donald Trump is urging supporters to amass in Washington on January 6th for a last-ditch rally to pressure Congress to not certify Joe Biden's election victory. Thousands of supporters from around the country, from the Women for America First Group, to stop the seal to the violent Proud Boys, are expected to descend on the U.S. Capitol President Trump's unsupported claim that massive voter fraud was behind his defeat in the November 3rd election 2020. Trump tweeted twice this weekend urging supporters to attend, labeling the election the biggest scam in our nation's history. Say in Washington, D.C. on January 6th, Don Miss, he wrote, The rally raised fears of fresh violence after the previous pro-Trump protests that included the Proud Boys on December 12th, which saw several people stabbed and dozens arrested. Trump appears to hope that the protesters could pressure Congress to reject the final count of state-based electors and reverse his election laws. We, the people, must take to the U.S. Capitol down and steps and tell Congress do not certify. Stop the seal declared that. Congress cannot certify this fraudulent electoral college, they said. On January 6th, Vice President Mike Pence is to lead Congress in certifying the electoral college votes submitted by each state, which represented the results of the popular votes. In the joint session of the House of Representatives and the Senate, Pence is to open and read the certificate reporting electoral tallies from each state and then declare the victor. That protest should be, as it almost always is, a formality. Democrat bidding captured 306 electors while Republican Trump only won 232. 
Trump's campaign has lost dozens of court challenges in several contested states, with which judge after judge saying they showed no evidence of any significant fraud. But the section can be started if lawmakers from both houses submit formal objections to any state's report. Alabama Representative Mo Brooks said that he has the support of dozens of lawmakers to formally challenge the counts. Meanwhile, Trump and supporters have pressured Pence to unilaterally reject some pro-bidding state electoral certificates. Furthermore, the black market for parts of the human body is booming in the Middle East. The transportation of healthy organs into persons whose own organs have failed improves and saves thousands of lives every year. But demand for organs has outstripped supply, creating an underground market to elicit obtained organs. A kidney now costs $260,000, the heart costs $119,000, and the liver costs $157. Desperate situations of both recipients and donors create an avenue ready for exploitation by international organ trafficking syndicates. Traffickers explore the desperation of donors to improve the economic situation of themselves and their families, and they exploit other options to improve or prolong their lives. Like other victims of trafficking in persons, those who fall prey to traffickers for the purpose of organ removal may be vulnerable by virtue of poverty, for instance. One factor that is distinct in this form of trafficking in persons is a profile of corporates. While some may live solely for criminal trafficking activities, others may be doctors, nurses, ambulance drivers, and healthcare professionals who are involved in legitimate activities when they are not. Participating in trafficking in persons for the purpose of organ removal has been condemned by the United Nations Organization. The transnational organized crime syndicates are involved in trafficking people for the purpose of organ removal and the organs themselves. The trafficking in persons protocol supplementing the transnational organized crime convention includes trafficking in person for the occurs of organ removal, which has been condemned by the United Nations. Next, we move to the top five popular news stories on Connect You Boss, its headlines. Woman stabs her born daughter. Second, World's World Cup, another change given to Africa. We take on a break. <laughs> 